In this video, I want to have a look at the ethical responses to genetic engineering. Well, firstly, in the UK, embryo research for therapeutic reasons is legal up to 14 days because it's said that after 14 days when the primitive streak develops, which is part of the central nervous system, the embryo can feel pain and um, this is basically illegal. So let's look at Kant. Well, Kant... Um, he can swing towards genetic engineering and with that. Much of the problem with these ethical theories are that they're dated and genetic engineering is a new kind of thing that's come about. So um, we have to kind of imply how, what these uh, philosophers would say and that's the same with Kant. So mostly Neo-Kantians would say the embryo um, is alive so you can't use it as a means to an end i.e. you can't use the embryo in order to develop a cure because you must use it as an end in itself and if the embryo is a um, you know if it's alive then we cannot kill because from the do not commit suicide we can induce that one of Kant's duties would be do not kill on the other hand if you were to say that no the embryo is not a person and you would say that any spare embryos or embryos up to so many days must be used for fertility, uh, for embryo research. This can be universalized, and if it's not a person, then we can't. Then we're not using it as a means to an end. We're just using a mere object. And what my view is that there's a clash of duties because on one hand we have an imperfect duty in order to you know, promote people's happiness. On the other hand, we're not supposed to use it as a means to an end, blah, blah, blah. But how can we not use it as a means to an end and create people's happiness, you know, by doing genetic engineering? And Kant would say if there's a clash of duties, one of these duties is false. So we know that definitely our duty to promote happiness to other people is not false because it is an imperfect duty, he has stated it. Therefore, our duty not to conduct genetic engineering has got to be false. So actually, in essence, we have a duty to conduct um, uh, genetic engineering in order to create happiness. So I would actually argue that Kant would be for genetic engineering. There are also Christian views on this too. So people have look at the potential rights of the child versus the mother's real rights and whether the potential life does have a right because this is the kind of basics on where um, the different denominations of Christianity have arguments upon. The Methodist Church said that up to 14 days, if it's from spare embryos from IVF, then embryo research is fine. But it's wrong to specifically create something in order to... Um, conduct this genetic engineering. Again, this is kind of a means to end principle clashing with Kant a little bit. The Anglican Church said that we should focus on using adult stem cells, not embryos, because even though embryos are potential, they are a potential life. They could develop into something and we have no right to use them. The Catholic Church, definite no-no because they believe life begins at conception. That's a person. It's wrong to murder. And so genetic engineering is no. And soulment is what many Christians look at because the soul is again an important part of Christianity. So for St. Augustine, after like 16 to 17 weeks in uh, into the pregnancy, then that is when the soul comes in and after that genetic engineering would be a no. Whereas someone like Aquinas or Aristotle, they would say it takes 90 days for the girl to get the soul and 40 days for the boy. I'm not sure how they get these figures. But that means that before they get the soul, it's fine because the soul is basically the body is a temple of, of the Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit is the most important part of us. Therefore, it should be okay because the body is just a temple at the end of the day. It can be killed. It can be made again. That's basically it. Utilitarianism, this has different views as well. For act utilitarianism, it's a yes because the basically the benefits of world hunger being you know, diminished, uh, you know, getting more food supply, helping people get rid of diseases, helping people's happiness outweighs any pain. And there's no specific problem with the embryo being used for, uh, for utilitarianism. For rule, there's more emphasis on autonomy and individuals and private choices. So this would state that if you're going to do something, it depends on um, what the different views are on whether the embryo, the moral status of an embryo, and it would have to be that the mor this embryo doesn't have a moral status around you, and that would have to be your view. So rule is a bit more complex, but it's a bit more regulated. For Peter Singer, preference utilitarianism. For him, it's not until weeks after birth that this 
embryo or fetus becomes a person because he believes in personhood. Personhood consists of many attributes such as consciousness, ability to reason, self-movement, self-awareness, uh, capacity to communicate. And for him, um, a shrimp in the ocean has probably got more rights to live than a fetus. Because I'm, he, he believes he was a person and who has these attributes is more important. Peter Singer also says that the old sanctity of life argument needs to be replaced with the quality of life. So sanctity of life would say no because, you know, God gives life as a gift. We have to preserve it. Why, you know, who, and by creating, like, life, who are we to create life? You know, it's, it's damaging. You know, we're nobody. We're kind of insulting God by trying to, you know, change his creation. Whereas quality of life say it should be done because would you rather have somebody who has spent their whole life on medication all this and you know they're just not going to have a great life well they might but you know living on disabilities than a society who don't have to pay taxes and they can you know well they have to pay tax but not that much for the NHS and they can live a good quality of life and um, natural law this focuses on the purposes the purposes of different things so our organs all have a purpose and by doing um, somatic cell research they may be allowed to fulfill the purpose if they cannot do so so that might be fine but the purpose of designing a baby does not seem a viable option so for natural law that would be a no um, humans have dominion over animals I think that's taken from Genesis story and um, that's why farming medicine is not a problem because again we're fulfilling the purpose the life to live because we're extending it and we're using animals to do so that's not a problem because you know that's basically it um gm foods again crops fine because they are there as a long-term change to help fulfill the hunger and it's part of the precept you know to um, live life, extend life. However, we don't know the long-term consequences, and if they're damaging to human life, that would be really bad because one of the precepts is to live. Situation ethics. This is more sort of calm down. It's like, what's the most loving thing to do? You do it in that situation. However, you've got to take in pragmatics. That's what John Fletcher said. So, if pragmatically it's working out too expensive or it's not making sense, or the chances are low, or the long-term risks are so much then we would leave. But situation ethics would depend on the situation. Hope this helps. Please visit my blog.